So we are here at the third Ant-Man film, Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, directed again by Peyton Reed. So this movie, uh, it's about Janet's time in the quantum realm. The movie starts off with Janet arriving in the quantum realm after she went subatomic. There she meets Kang the Conqueror. At first, she thought that Kang was just a scientist who got lost in the quantum realm. They spend time together, they build the quantum realm, advance their technology, create civilizations, and Janet helps to repair Kang's ship. But when she finds out who Kang truly is, she flees him. And for about 30 years, she's running and hiding away from Kang until she is saved by Scott Lang, Hank Pym, and Hope Van Dom. Fast forward to present day. Cassie Lang, she's grown up. She's built a quantum portal to the quantum realm. Janet has warned her about building the machine, but she builds it anyway. She activates it, and this machine takes Scott Lang, uh, Hope Van Dyne, Hank Pym, Janet, and Cassie. They're all going to the Quantum Realm, where Kang the Conqueror eagerly awaits their presence. And while they're in the Quantum Realm, it's discovered this miraculous scenery that they haven't experienced before. And these miraculous creatures and humanoids that are down there that they never thought would be there. So that's the, basically the plot of the film. What I like about the movie, I like the family dynamic between Cassie and Scott Lang. Um, I like the, pl the plot them focusing on Janet's time in the quantum realm, you know, what happened down there, how did she get there, how did she get out. I like Jonathan Majors as Kang, I thought he was pretty good, he's well spoken. Um, you know, when he talked, he was kind of like giving a lecture. It wasn't like other villains who just yell, he actually has some motivation and composure, but he can also prove it with action as well. He is kind of ruthless with his uh, mannerisms. So I like I like I like Jonathan Majors as Kang. Uh, some of the humor in the movie is all right. You know, like Cassie and Scott. You know, their humor is all right. Michael Douglas has a few jokes. That's all right. Some of the humor in the movie is fine. Some of the movie, some of the humor in the movie is not fine. As far as my uh, negative thoughts with this film, uh, one is the quantum realm itself. It's all CGI. No doubt these actors were walking in front of a blue screen the entire time filming this project. The biggest problem with MCU, they rely way too much on CGI. They rely way too much on it. It just becomes uh, obvious. The reason why I like Iron Man and some of the earlier movies, they relied more on practical effects mixed with CGI, but this movie is basically all CGI. So, you know, I mean, it's fine. I, I get the quantum realm has to be CGI, but it's obvious that these are blue screens. Uh, two, I didn't really like the ending of the movie. You know, Kang was a dominant force until he was defeated by a bunch of ants. And at the end, Scott Lang opens a portal back to his home world. And since the theme of the movie is for Kang to get back home, all he has to do is go through the portal. But then he monologues of how righteous he is, and Scott Lang is able to outsmart him and make him go subatomic. And he spent five minutes talking in front of the camera. He could have gone home, but he didn't. Uh, Modoc, I didn't really like him. I mean, his design was all right, but once they revealed it as Darren Cross, I didn't really care much about that. At first, Darren was menacing, but then he turned into a walking pun machine. I didn't really 
like that too much. Uh, as far as my overall thoughts on Quantum Mania, I don't think the movie's bad. I think it's good. Probably like an 8 out of 10. Um, but this movie tried to do too much. It tried to be like Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness, The Flash, Spider-Man, these big tentpole spectacle films. I think that's the problem that Marvel's going to run into. There is a post credit scene. One ties into Loki Season 2 and one features a bunch of uh, dynasty of dynasties of kings that lead to Avengers the King Dynasty. My issue with the post credit scene is, is this the real king in the movie? Or is this just another variant? They refer to this king as the Exiled One. The one in Loki Season 1, they refer him as he who remains. So is this the real king or a variant? Who was king exiled by? There's a rumor it could be the Avengers. You know, King's past could be the Avengers future. I don't know. Will Jonathan Majors even make it to Avengers King Dynasty because of his legal troubles? That remains to be seen. But Ant-Man the Wasp, uh, you know, I, it's good. It's good. Like the plot, the action, the acting is fine. But you know, some of the humor didn't land. The CGI is a little bit obvious. Um, the movie's good, but 8 out of 10, I think they tried a little bit too much. But, you know, leave your all's comments in the comments section below.